All right. Okay, so today we're talking about the CSS Color Module Level 4 Standard Semantic System Colors, which is a huge mouthful. Or we can just say we're talking about the system colors. Now these are the built-in colors, and I have a list here on my webpage. This is the list of keywords that you can use to access colors that are defined for your system. So in the browser, we can actually use these as color names, and they're defined system-wide. So if somebody is saying that they want to have more contrast, so if you're on Windows and you've got high contrast mode enabled, or you are choosing light mode or dark mode, like if I go into my settings and I'm turning light mode and dark mode on, it's going to change those colors without me having to change my CSS style sheet. And it does this by accessing these values. So we're going to talk about what these values are, where they're applied, and just very quickly how we can access them. So if I go into my CSS here, I've got this button, which is marked as disabled. In my CSS, you can see there's some things here, user agent style sheet. This is the CSS file that is applied by the browser itself. So Firefox has a user agent style sheet. Chrome has a user agent style sheet. Safari has one and so on. These style sheets contain methods and properties and values that apply to every element on your page to define what it wants to use as the default values. And it also includes colors. So for example, this anchor, well, we've got this, this button right here. Uh, it's using disabled button. This is something that's specific to Chromium. So internal light dark, it's got two values, one for the light mode, one for the dark mode. Um, that is something that's specific to Chromium. It's not one of the standard ones, like it's not in this list. But if we scroll down here and we look at Here's color. So the color of the text on this button, it would normally be button text, but that's crossed out. It's overridden. And we've got background color, button face, that's overridden because we've disabled this. The border color, overridden because we've disabled this button. The anchor that I was talking about a moment ago, if we come in here and we look at our anchor tag, we can see that there's nothing in my CSS file for this page. I've defined the color scheme as dark light, so I'm supporting both light and dark. I can toggle between them. But if I scroll up a little bit here, user agent style sheet, the color is, again, another one of these special um, internal ones, WebKit link. So there are some of these, but it doesn't mean when these are being used that you cannot choose to use these instead. So let's, um, let's jump into the page here and we will look at our CSS and see, there's the little bit of CSS that I have defined. Input elements. This is what they're going to be using. So this is for Chrome. The border color is using that same method. Uh, the internal light dark method, you give it the two colors, one's for the light mode, one's for the dark mode. Same as that anchor, use that same method. But button text, button face, button border. So these right here, same as on in the HTML. These are all of the colors that are defined that you can use yourself. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, on all of my paragraphs, what I want to use as my color is link text. And these are case insensitive. I can do it with or without the capitals. And if we jump back into our browser, there we go. There is the default link text. Now you'll notice my anchor and the paragraph have different colors. And this is one of the reasons that uh, this WebKit link is being used as the color, because it will actually look at, are you in dark mode, are you in light mode, and then it will change. This is that default CSS color uh, applied as the initial value for all links going back to 1998 when CSS was first uh, put into the browser. So that does not work well on a dark background in the dark poem. And that is why they added this, this different color. That is for the uh, accessibility. If I toggle into light mode, you can see now it is the same color. So when we are on 
in light mode with the white background, this is used as the color. But if I toggle back into dark mode, they are two different values. But again, we can use any or all of these. If I jump back in here. So link text, or I can say, hey, you know what? I want to use my button face. That's the background of buttons. So right here, the background color from buttons. If I wanted to use that for some reason for the color for my text, there it is. So this is the same as the background color from the button right here. Toggle into light mode again. There you can see it's here. It's fine with this dark border on it, but here, very hard to read. But it is that color. So if you wanted to use these system colors, you would have to make sure that you were uh, applying color scheme and then setting different colors. So you'd need a media query to look at the color scheme and say, OK, if I'm using this color, I might on something like a paragraph, I'm going to want to change the value of button face. But we have all of these values available to us. So feel free to use any of these at any time if you need to set something up. There it is. And now, hopefully, that will give you a little bit better understanding of what's going on in here. Like if I jump into inspecting my input, here's my text input, my email input. If I scroll down in here, when you see things like this, field text. Field is the background. So field and field text, that's for inputs. Gray text is for disabled things. We've got highlighting if the person, like what I did, just did here, I dragged and highlighted something. Uh, link, visited, active, those are for anchors. Mark, that's if you're using the actual mark HTML tag. And uh, we've got buttons, the border, the background, and the text color. And then canvas and canvas text, those are the defaults that you get for your entire page. So my white background with black text or reversed when I'm in dark mode, We've got the white text on the black background. Hope that helps you to understand the user agent style sheet that you'll see inside your styles panel here a little bit better and gives you a little bit more insight into what the browser is doing with these colors and styles. I will be doing some more videos related to this in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.